Hi guys, welcome to Antibodies video again. So we finished on that question. A new treatment for NMO involves using a monoclonal antibody. The structure of the variable region of this monoclonal antibody is identical to the variable region of the uh, anti AQP for antibody, but the rest of its structure is different, right? So we've got identical, different cycle dose. And use this information and your knowledge of antigen antibody complexes to suggest how this monoclonal antibody prevents anti AQP for uh, damaging, damaging nerve cells. In this situation, of course, again, we're looking at the structure. Why? Because they're asking you, first part of the question is asking you to use the information, so identical and different, uh, and your knowledge about the complexes. Okay, so easy mark, okay, will tell you, first thing will tell you that monoclonal antibody will bind to this nerve cell antigen, okay, so less of uh, anti-AQP can bind because identical different comes up from here or you could just say that monoclonal antibody will form antigen antibody complex with nurse cell uh, so uh, the antigen so less anti-AQP can bind okay and when monoclonal antibody binds it doesn't cause the damage so prevents the damage which comes here from the uh, question okay so we need to be looking at the pregnancy test and we need to be looking at ELISA test so pregnancy test um, it's a text that will detect the hormone uh, HCG which will be found of course in the urine of pregnant woman okay so how does it work you can all imagine having pregnancy test so you've got a strip you've got uh, two windows on it so the first one is to show you that the test is actually working the second one will show you if the test is positive or if it's negative so if the uh, second strip is going to change a color okay that will tell you that the antibodies uh, of this uh, uh, antibodies for this uh, hormone has been detected so let's have a look uh, how does it work so in number one here okay we've got the uh, application uh, that uh, it contains antibodies for the uh, hcg uh, hormone and this is bound to, uh, to the uh, to the uh, colored uh, blue okay so those are those are the blue ones and then when urine is applied to the application area any hormone will bind to this uh, antibody forming the antigen antibody complex so we can see it here okay so forming antigen antibody complex and then this urine is going to move up uh, up the stick to test okay if the if the test is positive or not carrying those threads with it and uh, of course the test chip will contain antibodies to a uh, hcg hormone that are stuck in the place okay so they are stuck they, 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 they do not they're not moving but uh, if the hormone then is present if a uh, hcg is present then that chip it's going to turn uh, blue why is it going to turn blue because the antibody binds to any of a uh, hcg hormones so uh, the concentration of those okay uh, will will cause the uh, will cause the change of color the hcg antibody uh, complex uh, uh, with those blue threads will attach so the color will change to blue but if, of course if they they're not present there uh, they won't be any change of color right so that was a pregnancy test the other test is the ELISA test so ELISA test it's a test where where we will be using uh, antigens antibodies and the enzyme okay so there are different types of the 
ELISA test and the idea of using ELISA test is to identify again the change of color for the positive results. So uh, it will demonstrate that the antigen and, and or antibodies of your own interest of whatever you are testing is present will show you the change of color. Also, the ELISA test, it's good to show you actually the uh, quantity of those antigens or antibodies, whatever you are checking, because you can then work out, work, work out from the intensity of, the, uh, of this color. So let's have a look how it works. Okay, so uh, I'm going to actually use uh, this uh, different diagram here. So here at the uh, bottom of the beaker, let's say, we are going to place the antigen. In my example, we've got a HIV antigen, but could be any other antigen. Okay, so we're putting this at the, uh, at the right bottom. So what would we like to add to this antigen, to this uh, sample, will be antibody, okay? Uh, but antibody, uh, there are different types of antibodies, as you can see, uh, looking at the color, so we've got blue. Blue antibodies are complementary to this antigen, and then the green and the purple, the other ones that are not complementary. So, of course, we want to leave our sample just with the antigen antibody complex, which we've got at the bottom, and we would like to remove any antibodies that didn't bind. So how we can do it? We can just wash the sample out. So we wash it out. What we've got at the end, we've got the antigen and antibody complex, which were complementary. So once we've got this at the bottom, we are going to add a second antibody. So your pink ones. Well, have a look what's the difference between blue and pink. So the pink has something attached to it and this is an enzyme. Okay, so in your second antibody we've got an uh, enzyme attached to it. So again the complementary antibody with the enzyme will bind to this an first antigen antibody complex and again any, the, uh, any of them that didn't bind we are going to just wash out. So what we're going to see our final Final beaker, it's the uh, antigen, antibody, antibody complex with the enzyme. And let's have a look at the differences between the beaker number one and the beaker number four. So, of course, we can see a change of color. So, this change of color was caused by the enzyme. Okay, so enzyme is causing the change of the color. And it shows you here that our results were positive. So we, we find out that in this sample, we've got the antigens of HIV, right? So a few questions here. So we've got, uh, we've got a mixture of antibody, okay? We've got then the position of antibodies D, C, B, okay? And those, uh, those uh, positions will tell you what are they going to bind to. So they're going to bind to different uh, proteins, PF, okay, so they're coming from PF, that one coming from PV, and here the last position, it shows you that the antibody B will bind to antibody A. And we need to explain why antibody A, so that one here, that comes from there, from the mixture, attaches only, so again the word only, it's coming back, to the protein found in the species. Okay, so why only? It comes to, to the word only, we're talking about being specific. So antibody has a specific tertiary structure, which is complementary to binding sites of the protein. Okay, so remember word only, talking about being specific. Right? So we've got this question again, same diagram. And the question says that antibody B is important if this test shows a person is not infected, okay, with plasmodium. So explain why antibody B is important. So other words, that is not infected, it means that the test will be negative, okay. So let's have a look again when we've got our antibody B. So antibody B is here and it binds to antibody A, okay. So what we're going to work out here, okay, what we've mentioned, 
that this will prevent any false results, okay, and it shows that it's of 